Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. We're going to take a look today at the new beta of Krita version 4.3.0. Some exciting new things, five awesome features to look out for as this approaches an official release. Stay with me. Okay. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time joining in, I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning centered around art technologies that mostly includes open source technologies because there's a lot of power in community and people, but also I do do comparisons with commercial products to kind of see how they stack up with things. We do a lot of videos also on different types of technologies, video editors, screen capture tools, photo touch up tools, uh, archiving tools. Go check them out and um, hopefully that adds value to your uh, current work stream. So today I want to take a look at the beta version of Krita 4.3.0. It's going to be the latest release. It is in beta. It's not official yet. Uh, I don't usually look at betas because I like to know what the, <laughs> the stable release is going to be like. However, there's some interesting stuff here and I want to get ahead of it and I wanted to make you aware of some exciting things that are coming around the pike. So starting right off, they, when I say they, I mean Krita, <laughs> have finally gotten into the concept of snapshots. If you're a big user of Darktable or Raw Therapy, you will be very familiar with this concept of snapshotting, where you can take a moment in time and roll back to that. That's very useful if you want to try a series of changes or a couple, let's just call them like the A-B tests of working on an image or touching up an image, you could get to a certain point, decide that you might like it, but also might like to try something else. Rather than creating duplicate layers or creating other safeguards, saving different versions of it, what you can do is use this snapshot docker to take a moment in time, save that in the panel here by clicking the plus, and if you decide later on, well, gosh, you know, the point that I've progressed to beyond that point, I really don't like. I'm just going to snap back to that snapshot, one of the ones that is more appropriate to what I was doing. And uh, that's the one I'm going to stay with. So just to give an example here, um, if I throw on um, this <laughs> on top of my layer and I didn't like that, uh, what I could do is I could switch back to the snapshot. That I took that's using the kind of the camera button after I've taken it you do have to make sure that you're consciously taking snapshots it doesn't do that for you but at least not that I can find but um, it is that nice kind of feature of I could take periodic moments in time and, and roll back to those and um, go back and forth if I had taken another snapshot after the fact I could also go back to that point so it's something good to remember and, and nice to know about um, to enable it you do have to go into settings dockers and there's a checkbox there for the snapshot docker, just so you're aware of where that is. Awesome stuff. Again, not new technology, but I'm happy to see it make its way into Krita. Makes it that much more powerful. Uh, there were some improvements to the wand selector, which is cool. Uh, that was a very welcome addition also to Krita uh, because that was missing for quite some time. Uh, it does seem to be well refined in that it's finally starting to capture some of the feathering of objects. Uh, that was a little troublesome with the initial release where I, I had some trouble getting it to pick it up and then it was kind of pixelated and there was some funny stuff going on. So that there's some good adjustment control there that they have built into it. And just to show you how clean that is now, uh, does a really good job with those adjustments of actually capturing with the little bit of anti-aliasing going on uh, with that wand selector. So. Watch out for that. Very valuable, very powerful. Next thing I want to touch on is um, this idea of a magnetic selector, which is something new. The technology, again, is not brand new. Uh, other, other tools have tried this. GIMP has tried this. But this one actually does fairly well. Um, there are some limitations here in that it is looking for mostly the solid color when it starts to trace. And you'll see what, what I mean by that as I zoom in here in that it, different from the, the wand selector, this is not really taking into account, at least I could not find a way to make, make it take into account the, the anti-aliasing going on here, the, the kind of the, the color blur effect that happens as uh, light gives dimension to things. Uh, the, the little highlights, the dark highlights, 
it doesn't seem to account for that very well. And I think the most practical use of this would be in solid objects, vector type things, where it's very, very defined boundaries. And that could be useful because, again, it is very accurately following those objects. If I continue to draw this out, you can see it does find and stay with it very, very accurately. This is a little wonky how it tries to grab across. I guess it's just trying to guess at what you're trying to do and there's no defined boundary, so I understand that from a system intelligence standpoint. But uh, it does a good job of tracing that out. Now here there's a little bit of crossover that might be confusing the tool a little bit, interestingly enough, and that you may have to play with, I think, the search radius a little bit. Um, let's try that out. Yes. So just to give you some ideas of, of what's actually happening here. Play with these, play with these points. Um, and I do believe this is just, there's a certain radius that's being involved there where it's trying to leap over to the other solid color. So just to give you an example of what can happen here with some adjustments. So play around with it, check it out. Let me know how it goes. Next thing up is they added some improvements to the gradient tool, which is another interesting thing. Uh, let's back out here. And let's bring that up radiant so there's more options under shape what's interesting though about these improvements is that you can now add in this this repeat option and you can see what that does where you can make continuous objects now this is red that's really kind of an eyesore but maybe psychedelic get a little hyp hypnosis going on here um, but you can kind of get the sense of what you can accomplish with that, what you can achieve. Uh, you could make useful patterns out of this. Let me just go back into the radio one. Like if you wanted to have this reoccurring circle idea, that could be useful depending on certain context. If you needed to have something that had like a ripple effect or just something that needed to have a consistent dimension to it as it got larger. So that could be useful as a guide. Um, it could also be useful to generate that kind of effect um, in the proper context. So know that it's there, some interesting things to play around with. Uh, lastly, there's a new set of brushes, one of which, uh, a selection of which I think is, is very innovative. Um, in fact, this is probably the most innovative uh, piece of the, the tool that I've seen here in that uh, it has watercolor pieces and you saw me kind of touch it up with it before. I really like the spatter patterns because the randomization of it just gives some really nice texture, depth, and feel to things. And this in particular, they did an excellent job with actually simulating what that would look like if you were like flinging it. <laughs> I, I love how realistic it is and the different possibilities of how you could really use this to enhance something as a, as a texture and even just like a small stylistic thing. Um, and there's a few different watercolor options here. I won't do them all right now, but know they're there and that they're worth playing with. Definitely, definitely. So those are the five. You have the snap, <laughs> snapshot docker. You have the improvements to the magnetic wand selector, the magnetic selector, which is based largely on color. You have the gradient improvements, and then you have uh, the new brushes, the, uh, the watercolor brush sets. So definitely try those out as it comes around. Um, you're welcome to try the beta like I'm doing. Just know that small changes may happen. You may encounter uh, small instabilities because this is still the testing phase. Uh, so know that the official version of 4.3.0 is still coming around, but some exciting stuff to really kind of watch out for and be ready to use as it hits the, uh, the open market. So thank you for joining in. This is Photo Learningism. If this was helpful, please do give me a thumbs up. Please do leave a comment because I love it when people ask questions and join the conversation. And please do subscribe. Uh, so you can be aware of the new exciting things that we're working on here. So that's that. I'll see you in the next video.